mysteries of PCs. Um, I'm going to talk about the mysteries of uh, uh, a little bit of about uh, forecasting on the longer term. Uh, uh, one of the reasons uh, we've used uh, worked very closely for now over 10 years with with um, Eastern WF. It might seem strange for somebody in an American university to do that by choice. And it was because, uh, quite bluntly, uh, they were a downside easier to work with than NSEP for quite a while. And we hope, in a sense, that uh, we can uh, work more closely with um, NSEP in the future. Uh, why did I get involved? Uh, with the word weather weenie was said in a sort of a disparaging manner a minute ago. I guess I was a climate weenie and sort of became a. Um, a, a when I went to Georgia Tech, one of the things you can see there is the Georgia Tech tropical cyclone. So we thought we'd better work on that. But the real reason that uh, I got involved in tropical cyclones is I got some very, very good advice from a friend of mine. And uh, uh, he said, you know, Webster, as you get older, you, you have to round out your career. And have you thought about working on tropical cyclones in your golden years? And my mother's advice was beware of Greeks bearing beer, which is really quite funny if you think about it. And um, uh, that was the advice of Grant. Of, of. But anyhow, we've done a lot of work. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two of the 79 men, what can I say? Okay. <laughs> um, we've written uh, quite a few papers uh, on, on tropical cyclones in the last little while. And uh, uh, the, the, the top one there, we won't talk much about at all because uh, for various reasons. The bottom three are theoretical papers dealing with Genesis. And uh, uh, a lot of papers, we have a nice collaboration going now with NCAR and uh, some very practical uh, uh, papers that we've been looking at. But what I want to talk about today are a series of, oh, well, there we go, a series of papers uh, which deal with extended prediction by uh, James and myself and, and, uh, and, and Hemi Kim, who are here in the audience. Uh, James, by the way, in terms of tropical cyclones, uh, I think he should be uh, made a national asset and then bronzed or something because he's very good. Um, uh, our shorter term is one to 15 days, and I'll just mention that uh, briefly, these are coming out in publications. Um, we use Eastern WF EPS uh, forecast, 51 ensemble members. I'll show you just two examples, Ike and Gustav. Uh, and um, the question you might ask, is there any skill at those extended horizons? Well, you can make up your own mind on that. This is uh, uh, seven plus days of the probability of, uh, uh, this is, uh, this is um, Ike and um, and you can see now, uh, th then, so this is uh, six days, five days, four days, three days. And the interesting thing is in terms of the resolution, uh, the deterministic uh, very close in, uh, uh, the, the tracking uh, gets down uh, very, very close to uh, 20, 30 kilometers, where the EPS averages about 80 kilometers for the whole uh, seven days. Uh, similarly for, for Gustav, uh, yeah, the, the, the final track, by the way, is given the solid line. You see very, very similar type of, of, of tracking resolutions. So it seems in a sense that, uh, uh, in a probabilistic sense, there is, there is skill uh, out uh, way beyond in terms of genesis. Uh, look at the longer term, one to 30 days. Uh, Eastern WF runs their EPS system uh, once per week, 51 ensemble members. It's extended now to 30 days once a week. And... Uh, um, Indeed, forget about those there. And, and uh, it goes into, after 10 days, goes into a coupled ocean atmosphere mode. So the question might be, is there skill? Can you expect anything? Now, one of the things, of course, when one's talking about that time scale, of course, the MGO comes in very, very strongly. And the ability of the models and the skill depends very, very much on the ability of the models to, to forecast MGO. Um, so uh, this is the system. Uh, uh, T, uh, about 50 kilometers, day 1 to 10, 80 kilometers for, for 11 to 32, and uses the HOPE model. We have a tracking scheme which depends upon uh, vorticity, mean sea level pressure, uh, thickness, and uh, temperatures, and um, thickness. And it's a modification of the Batat system. And uh, we also, and I don't, won't have time to talk today about uh, uh, Paul Aguadello's work, uh, but it's uh, coming out in a paper in, in climate dynamics very, very soon. That's, uh, I think, one of the uh, better statistical uh, models of, of obviously waves. And it's based, uh, uh, we have a prognostication scheme which, uh, uh, where we use to, to determine whether or not 
the, the easterly wave ha has a probability of becoming a tropical cyclone or not. Um, it's interesting that uh, these two sets here are one week apart. And this is initialized in the weak amplitude of the MJO. And you can see that um, the probability is rather low. But one week later, where the MJO is very strong, the probabilities of tro tropical cyclone formation are very, very large. So there's an enormous dependency of when you initialize the models. And this isn't, uh, you can see here, by the way, the, the yellows indicate the high probability of, of tropical cyclone formation, and the blues tend to be low. So the, the, the issue here is, can you indeed forecast the amplitude of the MJO? And the answer is probably not just yet. This is the monthly tropical cyclone skill uh, for week one, week two, week three, week four. And uh, yellows and oranges indicate uh, um, uh, probability of uh, uh, skill. And in Northern Caribbean, it's up to one to two weeks. In the Western subtropical Atlantic, one to two weeks, which is here. And uh, in the main development region, there is skill out to there's some skill at about four weeks. This is the reliability of the forecast. And please remember that uh, we only have very, very limited numbers of these because the, the, this new system has only been going for a very short time. And uh, uh, we get uh, un undispersiveness. Uh, this is the uh, observed probability, the forecast's probability. We under uh, predict a little bit. And you can see the things dropping off as the weeks. But within the game, we don't have many, many cases. Hopefully, this will get better. This is the... Um, ability of the model to um, uh, forecast uh, uh, shear. In, and you can see that, the, that in the main development region, for example, there's very, very strong predictability of shear. Here's the problem of the tut. And um, so this is where that extended predictability is coming from. Um, this is the, uh, uh, the variability of the atmospheric, uh, sorry, the African easterly waves, and showing that about 20% of the variance in the eastern WF is coming from the forecasting of the, of the uh, waves. Uh, OK. This is the MJO, uh, which I think uh, a picture that Kerry showed, uh, relative to the, to the various phases as uh, coming from Hendon and Wheeler. And uh, so what one can do is ask the question, what are the, are the prop tropical cyclone probabilities uh, for the full 32 days, depending upon the phase of of the, of the MJO relative to the diagram I just showed you. And you can see that the, the, um, uh, it tends to be, number one, su considerable suppression when the Indian Ocean, when the uh, MJO is centered in the Indian Ocean, and, and the opposite when it's further to the east. Um, the model does well in uh, forecasting the variability of the easterly waves. Uh, these, the bars are observations, and the little dots there are the are the model, and you can see that the, the model does very well, but there's re rather weak correspondence with forecasting. So in summary, uh, from regional perspective, the Eastern WF monthly forecast shows rather, I think, a, a, some ability, maybe a remarkable ability, to come up with the trajectories of the, of the this is the summary for, for one particular month. Um, so the one thing I'll show you very, very quickly, because uh, we spend a lot of time thinking about the Northern Indian Ocean. Uh, and this is one reason. We, we have a program which is called Climate Forecast Applications in Bangladesh. And we worry very much about uh, natural disasters in South Asia. And uh, one of the problems is that if you have a tropical cyclone in the Bay of Bengal, it's going to bump into a lot of people in a hurry. And some of the biggest disasters ever have come from that region. And so um, I'll show you three examples of Gonu, Saidar, and, and Najis. There were three major hurricanes. And we'll see how well we do. One of the problems, we, we, we have extended predictability of Genesis, greater than seven days ahead of Genesis, of these major storms. But we also get a lot of small, weak uh, positives that we have to work very hard on. This is coming out in a paper that James and I are writing. And this is the, uh, uh, again, you can see now that the, the, the um, observed and the predicted is now, there's a lot of, 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 of space in here which indicates that we're, we're not doing particularly well. Um, uh, a lot of small storms in here we don't pick. Or we do pick, unfortunately. And uh, so uh, the, I'm going to show you very quickly the three storms. This is uh, Gnu, uh, Najis. I have a special uh, worry about Najis. And this is Sidar. And Sidar is a great one because uh, we were operating in this region through here and it had helped develop a, a, a communication system for flooding. 
and the same system was used for the evacuation of people. That this was a, uh, I think only about 4,000 people died. It was 4,000, that's a lot. I go back to 1970 and it was a quarter of a million. Go back to 1991 and it was 50,000. And so uh, the, the communication and the forecast isn't getting better. But one of the great problems of all these storms is say they bump into people. Here, a quarter of a million people died. And that's a tragedy because the forecasts were not communicated by the government. That aside, um, uh, the, I, the Indian Meteorological Department has a responsibility of doing forecasts here. They uh, only have three days, and so deterministic forecast is not probabilistic. So we wondered if we could do better than that. And this is the uh, forecast of GNU, and this is uh, CIDA. This will probably drive you crazy. But the thing to notice, this is now days out, if you'd like, and these are the observed, and you'll see there's a great difference. We're not getting anywhere near the uh, intensity. But marvelously, when it comes to tracking, the, the, you look at CIDA very, very rapidly, you can see now how, how well we're doing. But now when we tr go to the uh, high um, uh, uh, density data, the, the high resolution data, and we can look at Nargis, and this is Nargis now, a long time in advance. This is a had landfall, I think, uh, May 3rd, 4th, and uh, it was picked up on the 20th. Genesis was forecast on the 20th, uh, about 10 days ahead of time. And you can see now, with the high resolution, that, that we're almost approximating the, 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 the level four. So um, this is the Genesis, Genesis verification. Uh, this is an advance of uh, probabilities in advance of the formation as determined by the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. So high probabilities for these storms as you move towards uh, before Genesis actually took place. These are the track verifications of each of the storms, and you can see that uh, well, for each of them, uh, they're, they're com they're, 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 they do quite well in terms of tracking. This is after the storm is forecast. Now, we've been experimenting with longer-term forecasts, and the, the question is that um, if you take the, the, the system that NOAA has or the system, the empirical system that uh, CSU has, uh, what it does is it has a series of predictors, and then on the basis of the past behavior predictors, uh, it tries to work out what, what will occur in the future. However, uh, why not use, determine the predictors from observations and back and forward with the model, well verify it, and then use the, the um, uh, CFS or the uh, East NWF System 3 to forecast the predictors, because after all, these systems do quite well in the large-scale structures. So, uh, Hemi Kim, she's sitting over there, uh, worked very, very hard on this, and these are the systems that are put out. Uh, statistical, 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 dynamical, and dynamical. And what she has done is combine the two to make it uh, statistical, dynamical. And I might add that we're finding for other types of things, for precipitation over South Asia, that the forecasts are okay using just the system, dynamical system. But if one goes to the, the dynamical statistical system, you can do far, far better, um, and especially in terms of taking into account the MJO, which is, the, of course, the, major, the major variable in precipitation over the monsoon regions. So this is the system, uh, the predictors, and the predict and, the predictor, and of course, um, uh, um, large scale conditions from the dynamical model, and, uh, and what one is trying to forecast is hurricane activity. Uh, these are the observations, uh, the correlation coefficient with observed hurricane number with observations and with the Eastern WF system. We initialize in July, July 1st. This is the wind shear and the wind shear. This is the surface temperature and the surface temperature. And we'll see that these three boxes are important and that box there. So if you um, look at the interannual variability, uh, uh, um, come up with uh, predict predictors uh, using these various things. And what you find, uh, the shear is about minus 8.1 and the sea surface temperature about 0.68. This is the type of system that you get over a long period of time. And it works, it works fairly well. And so, and this uh, is the Atlantic meridional mode. You'll notice that there's two squares I mentioned, one here and one here. And uh, they, they are used to some nice work by uh, Vimont and Kosin talking about the importance of, of this mode. And if you look at the correlation between the, uh, the meridional mode and the number of hurricanes, you can see that there is some, some um, knowledge, if you'd like, in that predictor in terms of the thing. So 
uh, the first step is you, you um, do uh, multi, uh, regressions between the forecasts and the observed history of hurricanes. You remove the target year, of course, each time. Uh, the second step, you develop the regression coefficients. Then, of course, you do sensitivities. And what you find in all of these that the, the, uh, uh, the two, uh, uh, the, the uh, um, wind shear and the, um, uh, the sea surface temperature, north, north Atlantic sea surface temperature, tend to correlate best. And what you can do then is uh, develop the dynamical statistical hybrid system. And if you do that, uh, this is the type of answer that you get. And uh, so if you look individually at the years, of course, taking out those years, uh, if it's 2007, this is our forecast, which is probabilistic. CSU, this was made in August. Uh, ours were made in July. Observe six, number seven. And you, and you can see that the NOAA, for example, was forecasting seven to nine empirically. So it's on the right-hand side of our Gaussian. And the same type of thing for the other two years. Um, uh, for, uh, uh, this is for 2008 and 2009, so at least it's comparable. If you look at the, ah, I left out the slide that Hemi asked me to look. The, the, we just do fairly well relative to that. So uh, looking at the statistical dynamic, well, I'm a great believer that, that, uh, um, that if, if, if you can do well empirically, then you should always be able to do well uh, numerically eventually. And we can do very well in certain things empirically, like with the MJO, but we don't do very, very well with, with, the, with the numerics. So uh, there's a lot of catching up to do. But combine the two in the interim, and one can start to improve skill. So uh, there's the three scales that we look at. And uh, take any questions. Thank you. Wow. Thank you.